so we were just about to talk a little bit about um, this great album. Mon petit lapin. Oh, I like the way you pronounce it. This is a very, very good album called Apro Music. Hi. Thanks. C'est fantastic. <laughs> we have similar feelings about each other, it sounds like. <laughs> I love this album for real. Thanks. And Break Me Down. We will overcome. But by the way, Joan Baez, like, get off the internet. Like, it's no, it's We Shall Overcome is a new one. And nobody's that interested in you, Joan Baez. Right. Like, okay, you sat next to Bob Dylan on a bus for a few years. But when you sing, I go, wow, whose mom is that? Are we in the carpool lane? It's kind of boring. You know, maybe you ever heard of Natalie Dawn? Ever heard of Rufus Wainwright? People that are actual, well, Rufus Wainwrights. What did Joan that. ever do to you? Well, uh, she kept me from getting to your We Shall Overcome. Well, that, we can't hold that against her. And then. Click, I hold whatever I want against her. If it was, re if it was real, no. But if right. we're goofing off, sure. Right. Thank you. That's very so kind of you to this. say. And we were talking a little bit last night about um, that you're a mental health advocate, as am I. You want to talk a little bit about how that happened? <clears throat> you asked me earlier um, what got me to become an advocate of mental health. Yeah. I, my answer was I went crazy. I went crazy. Uh, when I was at Saturday Night Live, I had panic attacks so bad. It's people don't realize, um, a lot of people say, I think I've had a panic attack. And it's, well, then no. Right. Because there's no you ambiguity. You, yeah. you don't think you're dying. You're dying. And why doesn't everybody see it? Right. And uh, that was so alarming. And when I went to a doctor, a psychopharmacologist in Manhattan, Noel Taylor, who saved my life. Uh, first time you were hit, if this is an emergency, you went, yeah, okay. Um, then I was prescribed a very low level of Klonopin. Okay. Still on the same dosage since 1993. And it, it's it working works. for you. Good. And then, uh, you know, you go through life and you get, the, then all of a sudden, depression hits. And you yeah. say, uh, well, I've done this already. I've gotten sober, you know. Sure. So I, I'm, really used to, helps. I'm really used to saying I need help. Mm -hmm. And That's now I, uh, I feel through my podcast and stand-up radio, I just need to keep getting the message out of the most manly thing you could ever do is say, I need help because we're guys. We want to fix everything. Light bulb goes out. I'll get a light right. bulb. I'll take that one out. I don't need to ask in. directions. I know where I'm going. We know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we're wrong. We're not wrong. But right. when it's yourself and it's your insides as a guy, there is a stigma to mental health of like, what's wrong with that guy? He's a person. Sure. And there's a neurological glitch. You have asthma. He freaks out and has uh, claustrophobia and agoraphobia at the same right. time, and uh, feels like somebody's pushing it on his throat all day. Yeah. But if you go to a doctor, they can take care of it. And people don't know that. So my only message really, you know, uh, there's places I work with and for, but, uh, you know, it's, that's my own the message. I just continually try and do, I do uh, get out is you, you have to ask for help. If you think you're a man, this is stronger than if you knock out 50 guys in the parking lot at Roadhouse. Right. Like you thought Swayze was cool in that movie? When you right. say to your wife, <laughs> I need help. Sure. I'm not well. That's manly. Yeah. And people, you'll be amazed how quickly and how many people and from how many different angles and levels go, hey man, I know exactly what you're going through. You should call my doctor. Or we go to this meeting on this street here, you'll meet other people, then we go to that meeting. What are you doing right now? You wanna hang out? Yeah. Are you okay? Right. People love to be of service and we don't know it because it's such a crazy, crazy culture now. For sure. And they're waiting for that signal and the noise. They're, wait, they're waiting for you, anyone, to go, I need help. And they go, oh, okay, yes, we all do. And right. we all do. Yeah. It's cool that you're um, so open. I feel like the, the silence part has been really hard for me. You know, like this record is about my own mental health struggles and overcoming it. The campaign, Keep Working Well, is about giving people a shared language. And I just think it's so cool that you're using your platform to do that. <clears throat> what I said to you last night, I meant, it's so, this is exactly what a well you sounds like. And then when I went, I worked my way backwards through the catalog and, uh, you know, the four agreements make no assumptions. Right. But being an addict, me. Yeah. I go, <laughs> <And me. laughs> uh, I'm not going to speak for you. Sure. <laughs> I go, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what I would do if I was pretty, you know, greased up. Sure. That's exactly it. But what confounds me is, 
the gentility you land on in those times back in the day when you were uh, uh, loaded. You know, there's there's these songs and all of a sudden something lands and you, I don't know if the only way to get there was like, I don't think the Beatles could have pulled up Sgt. Peppers and rest, <laughs> they were tripping balls. Sure. Yeah. Like, we're going on a magical mystery tour. Right. <laughs> and George Harrison quit the Beatles. <laughs> right. Like, oh, this is, Not me. He actually Not me, took bro. it off <laughs> right. and they had clapping on the way in. I'm going to a different tour. I just want more reefers. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that you were able to land the songs that you did early, yeah, um, and this this album, Logan, uh, I went, yeah, yes, yes, like this is like if you got to hear Springsteen unplugged, right? You go, oh yes, that's what I'm trying to tell everybody that that, but Thanks, it's all that yeah. it's crappy stuff on top of it sure. for him, not for you. Yeah, well, and I think probably for me too. Like this does it feels a little bit free and raw and real, more real. But you, but you stayed into, like, there is a bit of electronica, and there are yeah. beats that are completely incongruous with the words that are being sung. Sure. And I thought, who's first? Like, who pulls that off? And I thought that was really neat. Because hmm. when I'm listening to the album, a song would start, and all you have are, like, these, you know, piecemeal reviews. Sure. And then I go, that's not, uh, that's not tender and quiet you know it's a it's a beat and it's a and then you sing and i go wow love me you know what was the lyric i asked you about yeah um and was i correct or about you were yeah uh, tell years. me you love me and we'll kill it i'll kill it with you in time yeah that is that hit me in my bones last mm -hmm. night but cool. i didn't i was had you on the line yeah so uh, had i never met you or known you I just would have dove down the rabbit hole right. and over and over and over and over. That's and over. awesome. Like, it would have been my slow show or right. my, uh, you know, candy <laughs> room, a stolen car or whatever. I, but no, it's, and that's astounding. Cool, man. But Thank it's also you. like the self-awareness of, it's essentially, it, my interpretation, I'd love to write a review of this. I I'm, an, I'm an too. audiophile. I'm, Good. I, I love, I love. I really like music. And we got that on tape. I sound so. like a reality yeah. star. Also, I'm really into like the issues. I really like the issues. I'm an audiophile. With and, issues. You know, I go to stores all the time, so I'm patronizing. Right. Uh, that makes sense, lady. I love Where's it. Where's checks? <laughs> right. So, uh, with this album, it was. I just it was impressive because. The awareness you have. And you spoke about my openness, but your yeah. openness through music and every review and anybody that knows anything about you that looks you up on the internet, it's, oh no, he had a breakdown and he had another breakdown. And there was a right. suicide attempt that was like public, which as you and I know is, yeah, you can take one step and yeah, it's all done, done. Sure. And, but it was obviously serious at the time. So yeah. To get that, that was the message you needed to get out at the time. Right. So to come out the other end and see light at the end of the tunnel, go through it until you're in the light and go, I'm okay. I'm messed up. I am messed up. Right. But I am okay. And it's this, it's not binary. It's not, are you okay or not? It has a whole, it's both. there's, yeah, there's <laughs> yeah. millions of clicks. And it's immeasurable. And this covers it. And, um, the most wrong in the whole world, which I haven't heard yet. Yeah. The title, I'm going, where is this song? Right. I'm on the internet well, for an hour, like, well, I need to hear this title. It's too much. Thank you so much. Do you think that that neurodiversity that you're talking about, just your own anxiety, is a part of what feeds your art, too? I mean, I know this thing is like a blueprint of my own mind. Do you incorporate <clears throat> that sort of stuff on stage? or? No, it's not been a, an attribute in any way, shape, or form. It's been an incredible detriment mm -hmm. until it was dealt with, acknowledged, and you put it in the light and you isolate it, and it just becomes a thing. Right. And when you get a harness on it, because people go like, well, I don't want to take any drugs. And I, I go, well, if you had asthma right. or hives, if this was visible, during, if your panic, if your depression was visible in hives, you go to work and everybody would go, you better put some white cream on. for that. <laughs> yeah, like you're not, a, but then you just right. walk around with it for like a decade. Right. Cause it's on your insides. And it never helped me uh, at all because as a live performer, as you know, when you're up there having one, whoa, uh, spatial relations, every, yeah. vertigo, you're short of breath, but you gotta go through a monologue or sing, you have to talk. Um, no, nothing. The only thing, that, 
I can reference it and weird things. I can say the name of specific drugs. Right. Um, my actual drug use recreationally, sure, uh, phenomenally beneficial. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's the stories that come with it. You know, right. last night I'm on stage. I go, you know, people and you know, in Oregon especially, like they'll they'll bring you gifts. Like here's some edibles. I'm like, yeah, you know what? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Because uh, I don't know what you do with yours. Right. I remember it was like... I freak uh, out on mine. <laughs> I had one once. It was, I was like 18 years ago. My brother-in-law at a Dodger game goes, you ate that whole cookie, man? And I go, you handed me a cookie. You're like, what? He goes, that's like 40 joints. And I go, oh. I was wondering why they run off the field and then vanish into the earth. Because they had no concept of a dugout. Right. Wallace. Right. And I was like, yeah, maybe give me the heads up next time. Yeah, that's it's not certainly... a surprise thing that is enjoyable. So I said, there's nowhere as high than a surprise. Surprise! <laughs> Hi. Right. You want to know uh, getting in, what you're getting. Uh, totally. But no, it's never helped me hmm. at all. It's been uh, only one direction. Down, heavy, hmm. too fast, too slow. Um, but the only, but, but dealing with it uh, has Wait, did you only helped me. Drive your all right, these are our <laughs> radio voices. <laughs> yeah. We don't speak like this normally, but as soon as that green light comes on, I'm gonna tell you guys that the Blazers are better. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love Brian Miller. It's his actual it's voice. Right, no, he's just kind of having a conversation yeah. in the hallway. I think. I help you, but you're a songwriter, so it had the, like whether it's mania, well, when you're depressed to the level of depression, you may be able to reach yeah you don't feel like grabbing a pen and writing things down because who would want to hear this who cares right. Right? yeah my whole i mean this whole record was recorded 500 voice notes i just cried and screamed into my phone and eventually we found songs in that but so so i capture it this was the first time i've ever captured it live like that though. so this was your personal therapy you you were uh i was trying not to kill myself i think i mean i really think i was trying to um either leave myself a message that I could hear. I don't know what was going on, but it was a new thing. I, I was trying not to hurt myself, so I I spoke it into a place. We were talking about it's not binary earlier. Right. So it's, you know, they say fight or flight. Right. You actually, you found something in between. You, yeah. You, you found a... A gray area. Kind, kind of flight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flight here. Right. I'm gonna fight here. Im impermanent. Wow. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about that. You, you found the space between what's in the position's desk reference. Right. Well, then your fight or flight kicks in. You go, well, also, there's Actually, a third one. Both. There's a third one, the uh, the uh, best album so far. <laughs> I don't know if you got it. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. No? All right. Oh, man. It's um, when you're depressed, I'm asking. Yeah. Do you, Are you able to however you write, put pen to paper or not this, not for this album. Sure. Cause this was an enormous, the crack, the crack is what lets the light in. Right. And you were able to recognize the lights actually coming in. Sure. Uh, even if it's subconsciously, I'm going to let the light in onto a dude. And, but prior albums when you were depressed or at any time in your life, when you've suffered crippling depression, as sure. you have, is, do you feel creative enough that you need to get that depression down? Or is it how I would assume, but I don't want to make assumptions. Um, because when I'm depressed, like, why would I write that down? Who right. fucking cares what I think? <laughs> right. Apparently nobody, that's why I feel like <laughs> Including that. myself. Yeah, that's why I'm yeah. feeling this way. Yeah, I, uh, no, before I would always quit. I mean, I think those, those breakdowns that you've read about are real. I, I would get depressed and I would say, I'm firing my band, I'm firing my publicist, I'm firing myself, I quit. And, and this <clears throat> time I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I think, um... There's a, there's a great deal of narcissism in us, mm -hmm. not as artists as uh, people with mental illness. Okay. Because I fire my band, I fire my manager. You know, there's only one response to that the first two times. Right. What's going on, man? <laughs> like it all comes right. back and whatever you felt like you were lacking sure. is magnified tenfold. Like, yeah. what can we do? Right. Like, this is crazy, but you, right. what is it? You don't understand, and you know they don't understand. Right. Well, and I think tra probably trying to get people to stop looking at me in a crisis was my goal. And in trying to get them to stop looking at me, all I did was get them to look at me <laughs> harder and longer. And <laughs> it was a weird thing. You're probably right. That, that <laughs> narcissism piece is probably... I think here, right. on Adieu, you figured out how to get them to stop looking at you in crisis. Mm -hmm. But I think the other times, I'll ask you, can you see... 
actually don't look at me look at me yeah for sure well nobody sends out a press release about Cut. their career suicide no, unless just, they right yeah it was a way of something i don't know what i was doing get attention without having to put out product which is the demand of what you do <laughs> right. like oh that's cool that you're bummed out i thought it'll make a great record you're like right. no i quit the business right. i'm killing it i'm gonna go work at a community center <laughs> then, then you do articles <laughs> Right. about you right. quitting the business right. but the business is still this uh satellite yeah, you can't kill article. it right yeah oh, you can sure. kill it they've killed it. it's adele and john legend the rest of us are just holding on to raps right <laughs> like those two are just kind of the pillars <laughs> you're like john legend covered dancing in the dark yeah and you go that's the words to that song right oh it's the saddest thing i've ever heard in my life <laughs> who are sure. these producers ruining these songs <laughs> right. who produced this you obviously uh i wrote half the so i do it all the lyrics and melodies and my producer gino mari does all of the music so um we, we made it together he, he and i went through those voice notes and 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 put together the record and i neither of us could have made the songs without each other so um it's awareness it's great I I will um, I can't wait to have you on my podcast in LA if you get down there. Yeah, Santa Monica. Let's make a plan. To I don't do it. We'll be at we'll be at iHeartRadio in Vegas. Maybe we can swing through after that. That'd be great. Well, we we have to. There's too much. You know, there's too many people that will listen. Uh, talk about leaning forward. I mean, podcasts is, they subscribe to it. Yeah. So if I say this is my guy, um, they go all right. And they just follow you around for the rest of your life. I appreciate that. Over. Well, I think it's cool too that hope. I mean, hopefully, when people hear us talking, that I really hope. You know, when I was struggling, I, there wasn't a lot of this, right? There wasn't this record. There wasn't. It's brand new, really. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, you had eels. <laughs> you had E from the eels, but right. it's like, mm, well, there's a me there's too many messages here. Sure. Oh, you're eating <laughs> hospital food, but you didn't tell me why. Right. Right. I'm eating hospital food. You're like, okay, catchy, but why were you in there? Right. Are you a you're candy like, striper? You're an odd guy. <laughs> right. He was on, and uh, okay. well, he's he's kind. And a lot of musicians come on, and a lot, everybody's really honest on the podcast. It's great, yeah. but your story is entirely unique, and um, I would love. This is how it goes. If you're a man or a woman watching, or it's a or a woman watching this, um, we will exchange phone numbers. Great. And then later today, I'll say, how you doing? And it's that simple. So the most, uh, again, ask for help. There's yeah. so many people, have no, they don't know what's happening to you because on your insides, it's like, do you know what the lining of my stomach is like right now? No, because right. I don't know what it is. It's your insides, but you can show a little bit of your insides to somebody and you'll be amazed at the results. A lot of broken hearts out there. For sure. But eh, that's life. Yeah. Let's, let's hope we all live for many more broken hearts. Yep. Thank you so much, Jay. I, I love appreciate you, it. I love you very much. Likewise.